Welcome everyone to the second in this education webinar series by Henley and Partners. And today's focus is the Henley Academic Profiling Assessment. My name is John Milne and I'm the head of global education at Henley and Partners. And it's my great pleasure to welcome onto this webinar today, Mr. Alistair Montgomery, who is a, an associate of Henley and Partners and also the co-founder of the Henley Academic Profiler, uh, Profiling Assessment, and Jimmy Beale, who is also an associate at Henley and Partners and a co-founder of the HAPA. The format today is that both Alistair and Jimmy will be talking us through the benefits of the HAPA and what it means for you and for your family in terms of educational outcomes. The actual presentation will be around 20 minutes, We'll have a question and answer session at the end, so we hope to be wrapped up in around 30, 35 minutes. If you do have any questions, please do enter them into the Q&A channel or the chat channel, and I will be picking those up as we go along and hopefully answering those or pointing them in Alistair and Jimmy's direction. Now, the HAPA, one of the greatest difficulties an international family has is knowing how does my child compare to other students from across the world and of the same age? And then based on that information, where is the best educational setting for them? In which country, in which type of school, in which type of university? Well, the Henley Academic Assessment is a wonderful place to start. And it's my great pleasure to hand over to Alistair and Jimmy, who are going to explain to you the benefits to you and your family of the HAPA. Over to you, Alistair and Jimmy. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. And I'm going to dive straight into the presentation, which I hope you can see. Um, and Jimmy and I will, will talk about different elements of this, as John has introduced, um, as we proceed this afternoon. So what is the Henny Note Profiling Test? Well, as John has described, the idea here is to start your conversations and your um, aspirations going forward with data on where your child currently um, is academically, um, where their areas of strength are, where the, their areas of challenge are, at a time when there's something you, that you can still do about it. So you can go and speak to your um, child's current academic setting, and, um, and, and um, set your targets accordingly. Now, the assessment is designed for a wide range of students. It's quite sophisticated. We have a large bank of questions and we can start as early as six years old and assess students all the way up to 17 um, and beyond. It's an online assessment. So it's taken at your convenience at home um, on any internet enabled computer it also works on tablets too. And following that um, assessment, um, the, when the results are available, we um, uh, insist that, we, that the results are, um, are accompanied with a conversation with um, a Henley and Partners education expert um, who will um, talk to you about any aspect of your child's education that um, you currently want to discuss, including at your future aspirations and what you want to achieve. Now, uh, parents might use the, um, the HAPA for all sorts of reasons. I'm going to introduce my colleague Jimmy now to talk about his interactions with families um, and what he uses the HAPA for. Yeah, thank you so much Alistair for, for the introduction um, and, and it's lovely to be with you all this afternoon, this morning, this evening, wherever you are. The, the idea of using this as parents is, as Alistair has said, to, to get ahead of the game in terms of planning. Um, an obvious example is, is if parents are looking at their 12, their 13 year old fledgling learner, um, someone who is just becoming more independent, but they're starting to consider universities. And you as parents have in your, your eyes, you have a target of a fantastic world leading university, whether that's in North America, anywhere else in the world or in the UK. If at that stage at 12 and 13, you get 
objective data in the hands of an expert who knows education, that education advisor can lead you towards support. It can sometimes tell you as parents that your aspirations are not absolutely right for your child or that you are aiming too low. Whichever is the personal circumstance, you will uh, get decent, decent information. And then, and it's key here, if there is enough time, you are allowing yourselves the opportunity to put into place tutoring. You know, the hard academic stuff that needs to be filled in the gaps so that your child can compete beautifully in external examinations. Coaching and mentoring, perhaps these are confidence issues. Perhaps it's that the child is not keen on certain bits of school. All of that can be helped and fixed. And then school placements, if you are looking at changing schools, which is going to be the right fit for your child, both academically, but also socially and pastorally. You want your child to be at a school where they thrive because they are confident. And Henry and Partners academic uh, advisors and consultants can certainly help with that. And then, as I've mentioned, creating a path to university or specific courses. So this is a case of giving you as parents the tools you need to make better decisions. Alistair, anything more on that? Any questions on that? No, absolutely not. I think I think um, I think this this is what we see. This is what we use the information for already. Um, and what the wonderful thing is that you may be getting um, information back from your school. You'll be getting school reports regularly. But this is um, something which sits alongside that. It's not in competition with it. Um, it is to um, uh, provide a little bit more insight into some specific areas, often which in our experience, um, school reports don't go into. Um, and then it's put into the context of somebody who is, again, outside of that school environment in the Henley and Partners um, expert, um, who can give you independent advice um, on, on what, what to do next. So this sits as a complementary um, service to, um, to what you're already experiencing through your child's school. Alistair, if, if, if I may jump in there, I, th I think there's a, there's a difference between the school report um, and those parent-teacher meetings that we all go through when you're hearing how your child is performing right now. And you may have a niggle, you may have a doubt, you may think there's more to my daughter, my son, that meets the eye, and is this school necessarily getting the best out of them? One of the things about the data created by the HAPA is that you have a much greater idea of potential and where your child may go. And it can be used as a benchmarking piece of data against future performance. So it's, it's actually well valued. That's, that's, that's very true. And, I, and, and to add to that, just to tell you a little bit about what we are testing here, and we'll go into more detail about this later on, is that we are looking at academic skills, the underlying cognitive abilities, which um, underpin their future success. So we're not assessing knowledge. We're not looking at the uh, child's um, experience of world rivers or mountain ranges or anything like that, which might be curriculum based knowledge or knowledge specific to geography. We're looking at the skills which underpin learning as a whole, um, including problem solving skills, their language skills, their numeracy skills. And it's those things which underpin their interaction with the curriculum knowledge, the knowledge bit, which um, which is the school's responsibility to impart. So it is, it, like I said, it's, it's complementary, um, but it does sit separate perhaps to some of the measures that the school's already taken. In terms of who is using this, um, obviously we developed the HAPA to um, assist parents and, and, and the students, but we also um, interact with institutions um, and with that, um, uh, the HAPA is seen by um, places where you might wish to apply to as part of an application. Um, and the HAPA is um, well regarded um, by institutions because it is seen as a credible measure of those under, underlying um, uh, aspects, which are often not picked up in traditional um, uh, post-16 examinations, a-levels, um, uh, international um, uh, uh, baccalaureates and things like things like that. Um, to give us um, a little bit of uh, 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 context in 
where HAPA has come from. We also work with institutions in the development of their own assessments. And the team behind HAPA have worked with such schools as um, Harrow School, Wellington College and Westminster School. Um, and we in the past have been involved in international assessments um, for applications to um, uh, uh, schools. So we have great experience in knowing what those institutions are looking for, particularly when students are moving between education systems, um, but also um, uh, making sure that there are a, a valid measure of those students' abilities, no matter where they've come from. I think if I may add there, Alistair, that if your um, Henley partner consultant who's working with you, if you decide to work uh, with the team to advise you, whether it's, it's university institutions, school institutions, anywhere in the world, the fact that Henley partners and the consultants will have this data really amplifies the strength of the conversation with the institution. All too often, you will have a consultant who will be giving subjective advice. I think, Headmaster at Harrow, this child is right for you. Whereas suddenly your consultant will be saying, Headmaster at Harrow, we have this academic data on this uh, applicant. You need to look at them. And it goes a lot further. So I, I think it helps uh, consultants to carry their voice a bit further. Yeah, agreed. Um, in terms of what they get to see, um, on your screen, you'll see the uh, HAPA results report. Um, and we'll just very quickly talk about what this includes. Um, we won't go into too much detail, but um, it's, it's good to talk about um, the measures that you can see as part of the results. Um, so HAPA will have um, uh, modules in English, maths, verbal reasoning and nonverbal reasoning. Um, and we, each one of those modules is broken down into a series of sub skills. In fact, in those four modules, there are over 40 modules, um, sorry, 40 sub skills that, um, that we cover, um, which make up those, those broader subject areas. We also look at um, uh, an overall score, um, which uh, is a standardized score. It's a standardized against the UK national average. We recognize that that might not feel relevant for everybody, but we've chosen the UK national standard as a, as a strong international benchmark um, of um, academic achievement. Um, uh, at the UK education system, uh, particularly by university standards, is still considered a gold standard um, in terms of um, academic um, prowess. And the national, the UK national system is geared towards pointing students towards that academic achievement. So we've chosen the UK national standard as our as our benchmark at the moment. In the future, we might look at um, bringing in PISA scores so that we get a more um, international um, flavour. But we have already found um, the UK standard to be useful for for um, Western. Um, uh, universities as a whole, uh, but also those internationally minded universities to wherever they are in the world. Um, so scores are, are a standardized score. Um, you will get a percentile ranking of how that student will compare to their peers. Um, uh, uh, it's always age related. Um, and I, I might take this opportunity, Jimmy, if it's okay with you to pull up the score on um, the uh, report in slightly more detail. Um, if yeah, I can, yeah. so so bear with me. Um, can you now see a, a more zoomed in version of yes, the? Yes, can. All good. Very very good. Excellent. So so this is a, a sample candidate who has taken the um, the HAPA, and as you can see, we have the, our overall score here. This student is at 111, 77th percentile, a strong candidate, I would say. But here, breaking it down, we can see their scores for English, maths, and verbal or nonverbal reasoning. And this dark blue line is showing how they compare to a national standard, which is the gray line um, in each one of these subjects where they're slightly stronger in English, stronger again in maths, but those reasoning scores really are pushing this candidate's scores a little bit higher. And above, you can see where those scores fit on the bell curve. Scrolling onto that second page, 
and putting the, into context those sub skills that we were just talking about. Here you can see in the different subject areas, English, maths, verbal, nonverbal, you can see how this kind of performed in those different sub skills. Now, it may still be a little bit small for you to see, but in English, sub, such sub skills as verb agreement, parts of speech, adap um, uh, adaptation of words, for example, and how the student has specifically scored in those areas. Now, I wouldn't look too closely at the numbers here, but what's really indicative is where there are any gaps, any um, specific areas where a student might need um, uh, um, to focus attention, um, where you might want to focus tutoring or make an intervention if there is a gap appearing, but also to see those areas of strength as well. And, and they often um, match what you already know about your, your child um, in the things that they really um, uh, excel in. Um, Jimmy, is there anything that you want to bring up on this report? No, I, I think I think important to recognise that those whose English is not a not necessarily a first language still have full access to this, but we can make um, all sorts of uh, judgments or evaluations about levels of English as an additional language. I think one of the the new things for many international parents will be the verbal reasoning and the non-verbal reasoning, which are much more associated with intelligence type testing. So it's the logical thinking, the problem solving. So interesting to see the different profiles of different children. No children, no child is the same as the next one. And you will have siblings, I'm sure, um, who are very, very different. We really are able to unpick those differences, um, evaluate and support every child. Fantastic. Back to the main screen. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. Um, so in terms of the um, uh, how the assessment works, um, in liaising with uh, your client advisor or the education team at Henley and Partners, um, the wonderful thing about HAPA is that it's extremely flexible. Um, unlike many international assessments, you, in this case, you do not need to uh, find the time uh, to visit the British Council to take your HAPA. Um, the HAPA is taken at home at a time that suits you and your child. Um, it is taken on a home, home computer. Um, you are given um, an access code at the time and date of your assessment um, with which um, you enter in, into our website and it will guide you through the launch process, um, offering instructions along the way. Um, this is a, it's really important to say this is a low stakes test. So there's, there's not a, there's not a place at a specific school awaiting you here. It's not an, it's not an entrance assessment or anything like that. Um, it is a, a low stakes test as an evaluative tool to see um, what the student finds easy and hard. And therefore there is no pass or fail. Um, it is really just try your hardest. The other thing to know about it is it's really smart. And in its smartness, it will adapt to the test taker. So if the student, if the candidate is finding it too easy, it will automatically select harder questions. And likewise, if they're finding it too hard, it will select easier questions. Because the, the aim here is to find out, to probe what they find easy and difficult. And out of that, we will find um, uh, uh, exactly the areas which are more of a challenge than others. Uh, after the assessment, the modules can be closed and the, assess and the results are normally available within 24 hours of the, student, of the candidate um, uh, taking the assessment. And the um, results will be sent to your advisor, ready for your conversation, um, which follows. Uh, Jimmy, do you want to... Um, can you talk to us a little bit about what happens with yeah. the, the next discussion? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Alistair. So, so you, you are now in a position, uh, your child has taken the assessment um, and you have results. And those results are, are shared with you by your advisor at Henry and Partners. The results aren't going to change. We have the data, we have the report. But what is in your hands is, is the flexibility about or for the agenda of that discussion. And you will all have different needs. 
And because of the quality and the expertise of the advisors, they will shift to the sands of your agenda. They will, they will be able to respond to your needs. And by the end of that discussion, having guided you through the report, taking you through the finer details, if necessary, you know, from macro to micro, they will be able to uh, contextualize that, that data and therefore be able to make suggestions to you as parents as to what are the next steps. And that could be such a large range of things, including, as we've said, coaching, mentoring, tutoring, supporting you to find the right school, the right institution. Whatever it is, um, you would be in the right hands. And as it says in the last paragraph there, um, to, to collaborate so that you can find the best way to achieve future goals for your children. That is the most important thing for you all. Thanks, Alistair. You're welcome. Um, so um, if you have any questions following uh, this webinar, um, the Director of Education Services, Tess Wilkinson, is, the, is, the, is your first point, point of contact. She'll be able to provide lots of information um, similar to what we've talked about today, um, about the HAPA, um, and also about any other education services, um, uh, which is part of this webinar series, I know have been discussed over the next um, uh, few days and weeks. Um, so do get in touch if you have any questions. And I suppose um, I can open the floor uh, to any questions now, if, 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 if people have any. Thanks. Thanks, Alistair. Thanks, Jimmy. A very informative and interesting, insightful presentation and highlighting the benefits of the HAPA to internationally minded parents who want the best education for their child. And so I suppose one question that has come up and you addressed part of it in saying we use UK data because it's seen as a gold standard and it's recognized as a, a, a badge of quality. In terms of the content, if a parent out there is thinking to themselves, well, my child hasn't been part of a British curriculum in their international school or in their local school, what would you say to those parents to reassure them that actually this test is accessible and is also a fair reflection of their overall potential? I mean, um, from, the, from the data point of view, I think, uh, uh, the internet, the, the UK standard is very robust in terms of its expectations of students moving through the process. Jimmy alluded um, before that perhaps there's a little bit more of a focus in the UK on reasoning skills, particularly in the early years. Um, uh, and so perhaps there might be a slight disparity in our younger candidates um, in, in, in certain areas. But the important thing here is that we are looking at those underlying cognitive skills, which are not curriculum dependent. So um, these things are not explicitly taught in school. I mean, some areas, you know, grammar, punctuation might be, um, and that, that's certainly true. But what we're looking at is, is um, uh, what, how independent is your child becoming in applying those skills to their to their learning, and that is universal. Um, now there might be some um, some um, slightly different expectations on where students hit those um, those targets. So, for example, what is expected of a ten year old in the UK might have been met earlier in a, in, a, in, a, in a different setting, in an international setting, um, or it might be hit a little bit later. Um, that's not our focus here. The focus is looking at more generally at the child's academic potential and where those areas of development are expected to be and where they might be over time. Where HAPA really works well is where it's used um, when the student is younger. Let's, let's go back to that 10 year old example. And then we look again at 11 and we see what, how, how that profile has changed over that year. And we see, and we look again at 13 and we start to map their trajectory towards that aspiration um, in terms of maybe a, a, um, a senior school or perhaps even a university. And that's where you get to see um, that data, regardless of their background, really taking effect. I, I think that, that's great, Alistair. John, I would just add, if I may, that we have used 
this assessment with delightful children from Uzbekistan to Delhi, to Botswana, to Johannesburg, to Chicago. All of those curriculums are different. They're learning different history. They're learning about possibly different conflict or different world leaders. But all of them through history will be learning how to analyze text or analyze skills of analysis. And it's those skills that we are unpicking here in the HAPA as opposed to the knowledge. So please rest assured that wherever your child is, we will still be identifying their learner profile uh, with detailed accuracy. Great. And in the context of where they're learning now. And that's really important too, not just in the British context. Yeah, it's great. Wonderful. That, thanks both. And and Jimmy, just a question directed at you from a school's placement perspective. Can you just give me an example of how a discussion with a parent having placed their child into one of these assessments has changed their perspective or maybe changed their outlook in relation to their child vis-a-vis -vis aspirations or choice of school, in, in what ways have you experienced a very positive outcome directly as a result of... Okay, uh, that, that, that's, that's a brilliant question I, and I answer it with, with care because the positive outcome can only be for the child. And, and I have used this uh, with the right hat on to advise parents, as I mentioned before, that sometimes their aspirations might be a little unrealistic. Um, and I have worked with clients who will, they have a boy and it's, their child is 10 and it's eaten or bust. You must, if you're going to a UK school, Mr. Beale, it has to be that they go to Eton. And I have to say to the parents, Eton is not the right fit and here is the data. However, there are superb UK boarding schools where your son will thrive and punch above their weight because they are happy in the right environment. At the other end of the scale, uh, we did with a client from uh, Delhi. Uh, he performed so far above all that he thought his, or his parents thought he would. And he had made some safe applications towards UK boarding schools. And we were able to shake it up a little bit and say, have you thought about, and it happened to be Harrow. And our uh, relationships with the team at Harrow were strong enough that upon phoning Harrow, even as a late entrant, it was beyond their normal threshold. They said, we very much like the look of this boy. You know, almost we'll chop a bed in half so, so that we can get him into the school. So it, the key here is, is that the academic advisors working with Hellenian partners will be child focused. Sometimes that means that you as parents have to uh, hear things that you don't want to hear. Um, it's always going to be your decision, but you can rest assured, as I said before, that you will be in the hands of, of experts. I hope that helps, John. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. So Alistair and Jimmy, thank you so much for today's webinar. It's been incredibly insightful. Certainly in my experience, I'm working with some families out of Asia at the moment and using the HAPA has been transformational in terms of not only providing the parents with the reassurance and the confidence that they're making the right decision in placing their children into a school or a university overseas, but it's actually put them in control because inevitably every child will have strengths and there will be areas for opportunity. And what a great gift and investment you're making in understanding your child's true potential and then helping them and giving them that little push in the right direction in a positive way, because it just puts you in control as a parent and ensures your child's going to have the most confidence and inevitably will flourish wherever they end up going. So HAPA really is a tremendous entry point into that discussion around where do we go from here? And as Alistair and Jimmy have pointed out, the earlier you do this, the better, because it really does then put you in control over a longer period of time. Many parents will come to us quite late in the day, which is fine, 
but they'd wished that they'd had HAPA two, five, seven years ago, because they then would have been able to help shape their children's education in a much more positive way. So the earlier you start, the better, because it just helps you to build that picture and that pathway to success that we all want for our children because they are our most important asset. But thank you very much, Alistair. Thank you, Jimmy. The webinar will be sent out to everyone who has registered. And if you would like to have any more contact with Alistair, Jimmy, myself, or Tess, then please do email the contact Tess Wilkinson on the slide deck. But otherwise, thank you very much on behalf of Henley and Partners for joining our education webinar series, the HAPA. And I hope that you have a wonderful week. Thank you, everyone.